It's an enormous development in the coronavirus pandemic. CNN is learning that the European Union could bar Americans from entering its member countries because of the high coronavirus case count in the U.S. Joining me now to discuss this is CNN's Kylie Atwood, Fred Pleitkin, and national security analyst Juliet Kayyem. I mean, Kylie, this is sort of a, this is a referendum that they're even considering this. It's a referendum on how the virus is taking over the United States. Yeah, it's really a reflection of a reality. If you think about it, Brianna, what I'm being told by EU diplomats is that as the EU prepares to open its borders to international travelers, it's considering not allowing American travelers back into the EU. Now, that is uh, very, uh, very big news because it's going to allow travelers from other countries to come to the EU, but the criteria for which it determines which countries uh, are allowed to allow their travelers to come into the EU, I'm being told, is based on how many cases, the, so the source of the coronavirus cases in those countries. And so because there is a surge in the United States right now, the EU is considering keeping American travelers out of the EU when they allow other international travelers to come into the country. Now, they are also considering a number of other countries whose visitors would not be allowed into the EU. And we are expected uh, to hear a final decision on this early next week ahead of the July 1st deadline. And, and Fred, you're there in Berlin. What are you hearing? Yeah, I mean, I think I certainly think that that uh, is something that could happen, that the U.S. travelers could still be uh, barred from entering the European Union. I mean, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that when the European Union opens, first of all, it's every member state's own thing. Uh, which people from which countries it lets in. But of course, the EU is going to want to do all of this on a European level. They want to see uh, to be having a common approach. And that's something that they've done in the past as well. And certainly, the thing that they are going to look at is how strong the virus is in a lot of these countries. In the end, the science in the EU here is what it comes down to. What they usually do do is they will give preferential treatment to countries that are affiliated with the European Union. Like, for instance, right now, travelers from the United Kingdom are being let uh, into the European Union uh, and, for instance, also uh, from, from Norway and some other countries. So even some countries that are not necessarily part of that Schengen area, of that common European free travel area, are allowed in. However, Brianna, one of the things that I have heard from many German officials over the past months that we've been dealing with this coronavirus uh, crisis is they haven't been uh, uh, very impressed at the way that the Trump administration has been dealing. Uh, with the coronavirus crisis. In fact, it was a top German official uh, who a while back ago said, look, here in Germany, of course, Germany has done very well, uh, by and large, in dealing with the crisis. We can be very happy that we don't have a situation like in the United States, where there's a lot of German politicians who believe that the crisis is not fully under control in the United States. Of course, that's also something that plays into these decisions as well. If you look at Germany, for instance, it is probably the European country that is most similar to the U.S. as far as politically structured, also a lot of strong federalism. And Angela Merkel's government has been seen as being very, very strong in dealing with state governors, working with state governors to try and get this uh, uh, crisis under control, get the pandemic under control. And German politicians have been looking to the United States and saying they haven't seen that same level of cooperation from the Trump administration uh, to the extent that you've seen it here in Germany, Brianna. Yeah, no, we just heard, Fred, from one of the uh, major experts on vaccines who said it almost appears like the U.S. at this point has kind of given up on really managing coronavirus mm -hmm. when you look at the moves the administration is taking. Juliet, when you look mm -hmm. at what the EU is discussing here, the New York Times is reporting that the U.S. would be lumped in with, for instance, Brazil and Russia. And then it says that European nations are currently haggling over two potential lists of acceptable visitors based on how countries are basically doing with the coronavirus. Both include China as well as developing nations like Uganda, Cuba and Vietnam. So what does that say about uh, how the U.S. is being perceived here in, in their response. Right. So this is consistent with a number of actions that have been taken globally against the United States. So now we, we often talk about a wall here, sort of keeping people out. Uh, they are building a wall around us. Everything from 
uh, poultry uh, exports because of uh, the, the illnesses in our, uh, in our supply chain for meat. Uh, to the cruise lines yesterday voluntarily said we're no longer going to come into U.S. ports for a couple months because they see our numbers. Uh, to now the EU, uh, this is the summer of exclusion is, is how we have to think about it. The United States has failed uh, to effectively manage uh, the coronavirus and the rest of the country, uh, rest of the world sees that, but in particular uh, parts of the world that have managed to not only flatten the curve, but to get way down on that slope as they anticipate a potential second wave. So for Europe, they know it's not over, but what they can do is manage the risk between now and say October, if there is a second wave, the United States as a whole, every single citizen now is seen as a potential risk factor. Um, and so it is completely, I will say this, rational for the EU to exclude us at this stage, given our numbers. I'm not happy about it, but we would do the same if we saw those EU numbers looking like ours and ours were in a better place. Um, it's just the nature of a global pandemic. Uh, you have to make these border decisions uh, based on science, and our science is showing half of the states are still in the first wave and heading up. That is not the EU's fault. I think that's the yeah. fault of, of management by the White House. Let's get some fast reaction. Elizabeth Cohen is our CNN senior medical correspondent, and Aaron Bromage is a CNN contributor and biology professor and immunology specialist at UMass Dartmouth. And so, Elizabeth, first to you again, not a done deal, but just given the surge in, in coronavirus cases here in the U.S., it, would this be warranted? You know, you have to understand why they're considering it, Brooke. I mean, we are one of the hotspots. It does make sense. They're trying to protect their own countries. And I think that this is really a sad testimony to the job that this country has done, the United States has done in bringing coronavirus under control. I mean, look, back in January, when this was all hitting, the U.S. had the same opportunities as other countries to get things under control. And other countries simply did better. Their numbers came down Ours have not been coming down. And it's sad that we're in this situation right now. Aaron, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, we were very quick to close our borders and we saw what happened with the US being peppered with new infections from Europe. Um, it goes back the other way. We did not handle our business here. And because we didn't do that, um, we now get put in a timeout until we can get things under control. Let me go back to the president of the United States, seemingly at odds. You just heard the sound right from Capitol Hill today, seemingly at odds with top health officials about the, the ongoing threat for, for both of you. And then, Professor, I'll come back to you. What do you make of all of this? I, I, sorry. I think this is, I, this is an important. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Go ahead. You take it. Go ahead. OK, um, you know, I think that this is that this is an important moment when we look at what the president has said about the um, that things are dying out, that that just isn't the case. Things are not dying out. The situation is getting worse and he needs to start being honest about that. You know, listening to Dr. Fauci's testimony today, Aaron, this is for you. You know, he testified that he's never seen a single virus with such a wide range of symptoms as we've seen with COVID-19. And that, you know, some people may wonder why they should be concerned if they don't have more serious symptoms. And so just with that in mind, and as you see more and more Americans hanging out, gathering over the summer, many of whom not wearing masks, not observing social distancing, what concerns you the most? It's just we've had our focus on the people that are older with comorbidities and we've seen the devastating effect the virus has had on them. We took our eyes off what's happening to the younger people and I'm seeing pediatricians banging the drum talking about what they're seeing in children. We saw the double lung transplant in a 20 year old this past week. Um, we really don't know what the long term effects on the health of younger people who may show milder disease, um, but we don't know what the longer term effects are going to be on lung function, neurological function. There's just so much that we don't know. Um, we're guessing right now.